one of the things that you'll encounter while you're embroidering is called push-pull compensation. And all three of these shapes were supposed to be rectangles. And you will get pulls and pushes. So it will push out this way and it would pull in from here and deform your objects. The same goes with circles. A lot of times you'll want to get a circle, but you'll end up with an egg. And also you'll get gaps when you have, especially when you do a circle like this and you have um, different layers touching each other, different stitches touching each other, you'll get gaps in here. I'm going to show you how to fix that. All right, so here we are in hatch three. And what I want to do is show you kind of like a large overview of what your stitches look like. This is with no underlay. So your stitches are going back and forth like this. And you can see up close, just look in here. This is what your stitches look like. Now, all you really need to know, now there's, there's a bunch of YouTube videos out there with a million hours worth of viewing on here, but your stitches are going to push out this way and pull in this way, okay? And I'm gonna show you what the compensation does inside the software. So when you have uh, stitches that are next to each other and they're going in the same direction like this, the same angle, you're gonna notice that you have overlap here. So you can see the green here and you can see the red here. Now remember you saw this stitch out already and you didn't see any gaps, but there were some slight gapage going on in some of these areas because I didn't have a huge overlap there. And what happens is, remember, this is pulling away from each other. So you want there to be some overlap so they won't pull away from each other and you won't get a gap. So now what I wanna do is show you what pull compensation is. And the only way to do that is to digitize this. So I'm just gonna do a couple of right clicks here. I'm gonna hold the control button so you can get some straight lines here. Okay. And I'm going to press enter here now. I'm going to get rid of the underlay because we don't want any underlay here. So you can see. So now this is what your stitches look like. And let's take the underlay off. Now, if you look, I did this on purpose. Back here, you have your grid. You see this line here? These are your compensation. That is what's going to be your overlap. So let me pull this in. And excuse me, let me select it first and then pull that in. You see that? Let's do that again. That is your overlap. So that is what's why what it's giving you is that pull compensation and normally it's 1.7 millimeters. But what you can do if you want to make that bigger, you can go over a little bit more. And you see that? I put it at 0. Uh, 0 0.60 and now you have more pull compensation, which is a little bit more than a millimeter, which is what you want to do so that if you don't want to do it with the software, now from what I'm understanding, this is a pretty good sweet spot, but normally what I do is I get kind of pedantic about it, and I'll come in here and measure, so you see the green tip here, I'll push M for this tool, and I'll measure from here down to here, and usually between a millimeter, three millimeters, between a millimeter and three millimeters will be okay. So you don't have to worry about anything and it's not some you know rocket science thing. Again, I'll, I'll maintain this forever. This is not, H, this is not a uh, an art uh, or anything like that. You can just, I'll push H here, you can just stretch out, press O here. You can stretch out, let me find it here. Say for instance, you wanted to get this to be a little bit more uh, integrated here, overlap, just pull it out. You can see it pulling out, just do your measurements. And if you see here, but you need to push shift here, by the way, I apologize. You need to press shift. So if, you, if you're doing that, make sure that you're pressing shift. So when you press shift, it'll do it on both sides. All right, so anyways, so when you, let's say you measured this and this wasn't the right length and you see that's 1.2 1.93 millimeters okay but let's say you want a little bit more what you can do is just pull that out press shift at the same time pull that out and get yourself a little bit more overlap so you don't necessarily have to go inside of here but if you wanted to make sure that you had enough overlap like here you can see 
you don't have hardly any overlap here right so let's select this one and you see that the pull count statement is at 0 0.20 set that to 60 and you see it's sticking out so if these two were next to each other you just want to make sure that you have overlap and I would say anywhere from millimeters to three millimeters depending on what you're doing uh, to Tommy stitches and these sitting next to each other are no different so let's just say for instance you had a, a tatami stitch okay let's press enter and then let's make sure this is a tatami stitch and a lot of times you can see you still have that same and this would be a satin sitting next to it you want those to overlap and this will happen a lot because you'll have a border next to or over the top of a tatami stitch and if you don't have it overlapping you will see a gap so let's say you had like you this is not enough and you will see a gap once you stitch this out so uh, and the only way to know how your fabric is going to react is to stitch out a sample first but at least before you do that just stretch that out a little bit and get that overlap get your measurement tool out by pressing M measure it out that's not enough so get yourself a little bit more overlap here right just stretch it out a bit more and get yourself a bit more overlap and when you do that and you get that overlap you'll have less gaps but you won't know for certain 100 percent sure until you stitch it out now that's pretty much all you need to know about push-pull compensation another hard one is circles so a lot of times you'll see guys when they're digitizing that because a lot of times you'll get an egg they'll digitize like this right because remember you're pulling in on the sides and you're pushing out of the top so what they'll do is when they're digitizing they will push this down a little bit right but you don't have to go crazy if your circle was like this let's say you had a circle you could just just short it just a little bit on each side and then pull it out a little bit right and then again make sure you look at what's going on once you stitch it out so when you have circles a lot of times will happen you'll think this is a perfect circle but you're not going to get a perfect circle so you'll just get a lot of guys at H and they will just give it a quick little just a little bit on each side maybe they add an extra note here and they'll just get a little bit on each side and then they'll stretch it out just a little bit and it, it doesn't have to be you know a huge change and you won't know until you stitch it out so I just wanted to show you that and just remember out of the tops you're pushing and out of the side you're pulling so just make sure now this is why with 3d puff we make what's called caps on the end because that puff is going to push out and you want to stop it from pushing out so you make caps and if you have something butted up like this you don't have to overlap as much and you can set it down here if you want to because more than likely these will push into each other it's more than likely you want to be concerned about that all right man that's my story i'm sticking to it i'll see you in the next video peace